Okay, assalamu alaikum and good afternoon to everyone. Uh, can you all hear me? Can you all hear me? Okay, thank you. Okay, we're gonna uh, today is our second part of the subjects. We're gonna learn about graph theory. I'm not sure whether you have learned this before during your uh, first year. But this graph theory uh, just uh, connected between the ver vertices or we call it a node some, sometimes. And of course, ages and then we have directed and, and undirected. This is a part one of uh, four parts of graph theory lecture. Okay. So this uh, will be recorded and I will upload. Uh, I will upload this uh, video to my YouTube. Last time from the Google Meets recording, it's not really, I'm not sure, uh, difficult to edit and stuff. So just bear with me. Okay, this is the what we're going to learn today. Graph and graph mod, I mean, um, graph and graph models and graph terminology and special type graph. This is just introduction to the graph theory. Okay. Uh, graph and graph model. So, a definition, what is the graph? It's not like the graph you say is a chart or chart uh, or whatever, uh, a normal graph that you can make. This is a graph of connected ver vertices or using a line or something like ages or something. Okay, graph, the, the, the definition of graph is, is just graph g is equal to set of vertex and age ages age or ages consists of a non-empty set of v or vertices or nodes and set of e ages so what is the vertices so this is the this is the vertices okay or sometimes we call it nodes or you can imagine like if this is a computer network this is a nodes or machine or pc router or something so this is the vertices v of vertices and set of e of ages so this one the line we call here this is the all ages each age has added either one or two vertices associated with it okay each age has either one or two vertices associated with so, so this one a and b let's say this is the ages one we can say that e1 is associated with vertices a and vertices b uh we call it endpoints a and b is the endpoints and h is said to connect its endpoints okay example is this is a graph with four vertices and five ages so you can say that a set of v is uh a set of V is A, sorry, A, B, C, and D. And set of ages, so let's say E1, this one, E2, and this one is E3, and this one is E4. 1, one E1, E2, E3, E4, and this is E5. So ages, you have here E, E1, E2, E3, E4, and E5. So this is what we call it ages. Just a remarks. We have a lot of freedom when we draw a picture of a graph. All that matters is the connection made by the ages, not the particular geometry depicted. For example, the length of ages, where the ages cross, how vertices are depicted, and so on, do not matter. So let's say if you want to redraw this graph, you have this one A, this one B, this one uh, C, and this one D. You can always draw A, B here, or A and C here, B and D here, and then uh, C and A, or else B and C here, sort of, uh, yeah, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. So this graph is just the same with this one, equal. So it doesn't matter the geometry or the way you represent the graph. This graph, we call it this graph A and this graph B, same. A and B is the same graph. 
A graph with an infinite vertex set is called an inf infinite. Sorry, graph with an infinite vertex set is called an infinite graph. Graph with finite vertex is called a finite graph. So basically, we learn the finite graph. Uh, just a terminology. Just don't you don't have to worry about it. So the definition: order pair of vertices represent as u v directed from vertex u to vertex v. So when we see the arrow with the directed, uh, this is what we call arrow. So this is a directed graph. Directed graph. You can imagine is a like a one way, uh, you know, one way street. Okay, you you can only go to U to V or directional. This you can go to. This one is a undirected. You you can you you can go between U to V and V to U doesn't matter but this director you can only go from u to v one way street okay so represented as u u as a source or initial and v is the end point okay for undirected graph u and v can be both uh, initial and end point or destination or something like that initial sometimes we call source if you learn about the network you can source to destination source to destination so in a simple graph each edge connects two different vertices and no two edges connect the same of and the same pair of vertices so you have your a and you have your b so simple edge connect two different vertices and no two edges connect the same so you only have A and B. Let's say you have, let's try, uh, let's say what color, okay, this one. You have another edges connecting A and B. Okay, this is not a simple graph. Simple graph, you only have one edges, okay? A and B, one edges. One, sorry, one edge. If you have two edges, meaning that this is not a simple graph anymore. Multigraph may have multiple edges connecting the same two vertices. When M different edges connect the vertices U and V, we say that UV is an edge of multiplicity M. M different edges, let's say A and B here. You cannot control Z or something. Uh, So if you have an M, so here A and B is a multigraph with H of multiplicity M. M is equal to if you if you refer to this graph, M is equal to two two edges. An edge that connects a vertex to itself is called a loop. Okay, this one a loop, just like your you know uh, your loop when you do a troubleshooting in network. Basically, if it's not connected, the first thing you do, I mean, of course, you can uh, power on, power, uh, power off and power on the button, I mean, the router or machine. But one of it, you try to ping yourself. This is what we call a loop. Okay? You try to ping yourself if 169 or something. Um, yeah, you uh, if you have your own IP or something, you just try to ping yourself. This is the basic of troubleshooting a network connection. An edge that connects the vertex itself to call a loop. A pseudograph may include loops as well as the multiple edges connected to the same pair of vertices. So a pseudograph may include loops as well as multiple edges. So you have from A to C, you have one, two. And C, uh, this is called this is called a pseudograph. If you don't have a pseudograph, we just call it I'm sorry, if you if you don't have a loop, we will just call it a multigraph. Okay? A, B, C. So this is the example of multigraph. Okay, without a loop. Once you have a loop and an edge, so you have a pseudograph. Both this is not a simple anymore. Simple graph only have one edge. One edge, sorry, one edge, A to B. So there's no standard terminology for graph theory. So it's crucial. Okay, they have I mean other books. They say like vertices may they might call it nodes or something. Uh, ages you may call it a line or connect 
connection route or something but in this uh, i'm using this uh, book i mean uh, this basically this a uh, mainstream uh, more people use this terminology set of vertices ages and stuff okay definition h type loop a loop is an edge whose endpoint are equal u to u u to u multiple edges to okay this is type of a uh, uh, i mean multi edges like undirected or directed it doesn't matter directed or undirected uh does uh do do not matter in loop so okay director and director it doesn't matter so it says you and you so you you are the source and you are the destination multiple ages two or more ages joining the same pair the same pair of vertices uh, we, we already cover that simple undirected graph so this is undirected graph okay if you have let's say you have put another vertices uh, sorry another age here this is not a simple graph anymore okay it's not a simple graph anymore so once you have only one ages between sorry only one age between set of vertices u to w one age w v one age v the v u one age so this is what we call a simple undirected graph so directed graph you know you have arrow a and b so the, in, the initial a to b there's no way from b to a and and directed graph or the or digraph we call it is g is a set of graph where vertex was set uh, is, is, is is a graph with a set of ver vertex v and ages e consists of non-empty set of v vertices or nodes or instead of e directed or arcs uh, sometimes uh, some textbook they call it arcs each h is associated with an ordered pair of vertices the director h is associated with the ordered pair u v is said to start at u and end at v so this one u and v so start at u and at v so this is directed graph undirected graph it can either start at u and at v or vice versa so the important one is a graph where the endpoints of an H are not ordered are said to be undirected graph. Okay, basically okay. you. Yes, yes. I already, I already set uh, because last time I have to enable one, but I already set uh, automatic. Wait. Okay. Uh, wait. Wait. Um, Okay, we wait. A lot of students. <laughs> Not just one student. Oh, yeah, you have to be in this window in order for you to be accepted. I mean, I in the PowerPoint slide. Never mind. Okay, right. So, just, uh, I mean, uh, just inform me or just interrupt me if uh, there is anything problem. Some student cannot join in or something. That's good. Uh, mean that you'll concentrate on my lecture never mind okay okay graph where the endpoints of n h are not ordered are said to be undirected graph again u and v without any see this is bi-directional bi-directional two-way streets this is one-way streets so multi-graph uh, this is just okay multi-graph you have u and v have two ages e1 and e2 okay multiple approach. so representation example this is how this is set of v v is where is u v and w the set of vertices is u v and w and set of ages is e1 e2 and e3 okay pseudograph this is pseudograph so multigraph multigraph remember multigraph without loop without loop Pseudograph, you have a loop. Once you have a loop, 
it's called it is called pseudo graph it's not called a multi graph i mean for me if you think I mean, in, in the logical sense wait. uh i heard some okay anyone cannot come in at uh, anyone cannot come i mean a, a, anyone can en enter the google meet my class just inform me okay so graph type pseudo graph this is a pseudo graph but if you remove the loop it become a multi graph so again the, this is uh, just how you write it down in a formula v is a u v and w set of vertices u v and w and e is a set of ages e1 e2 e3 and e4 so direct tag graph basically the same set of vertices v and set of ages e that are ordered pair ordered okay the only difference ordered pair only v there is ages so you have g v e set uh the set of graph of set vertices v and ages e where, where you have a set of vertices u v and w ages is u v okay the the, the only difference the way you write down the ages e is u v meaning that u is the source and v is the destination v w v is the source and w is the destination and this one w u w is the source this is the destination source and destination or is the in, uh, initial point end point whichever terms you like and directed multigraph consists of set vertices v is just the same uh the ages e1 into are multiple ages if uh f e1 is equal to f e2 okay function of e1 equal to function of e2 you can see that e1 and e2 basically the same from u to v u is the source uh and v is the destination so you have you, you can f e1 f e1 is equal to f e2 okay e1 and e2 they just you want to do a multiple just if f e1 and equal to f e2 so you have two ways of uh u and v have two routes i always if you mention about the network it's always the routing ways or whatever or whatever u and v so you have u v you have two ages it might be like this e1 and e2 might be the distance maybe if you talk about the distance uh okay you can talk about distance uh is the simplest way like this is one is a 1km this one can be a two kilometers or something like that or the link quality like a bandwidth eh? <laughs> what happens never mind uh yeah i accidentally uh, the, the, but, but the button i push the button and clear everything so never mind so it can be e1 uh, e1 and e2 can be different in terms of distance distance can be like uh kilometers maybe a bandwidth in network or link quality link quality like uh call that a delay or something like that so it can be the e1 and e2 even though u and v you have two ways maybe it can kilometers bandwidth or link quality delay it's just that the way, I mean, the way that you can enter UM now, they have two ways at the gate, PJ gate or KL gate or something like that. Others gate are still closed. And then E3, V, W, and W, uh, this is the loop. A simple director graph has no loops and no multiple ages. Okay, a simple director graph has no loops and no multiple ages okay you you can see here b and c if this is undirected you can say that this is the not a simple graph you can say this is a multi graph but in directed graph you can see that there is one way b to c and there is one way uh, directed c to b there's no like b to c doesn't have two ways only one way c to b also only have one way again b to c one way one way and c to b is one way so this is the simple graph simple directed graph simple directed graph 
this directed graph with three vertices and four edges a b a and c let's say if you add this one a and c another so this will not this will not become a simple directed graph anymore simple directed graph meaning that's one h for each vertices okay one h a directed multigram may have multiple directed edges when there are m directed edges from the vertex u to vertex v we say that u v is an h of multiplicity m so you have a to c a to c you have two so this one a to c you, you can say that m is equal to two and uh the way we write down sorry the way we write down maybe a c okay m a c is equal to two uh what else b c m b c is equal to two so in this area the multiplicity of a b is one and the multiplicity of b c is two a b oh yes a b is one so m a b is equal to one m a c equal to two m b c is equal to two so you learn a bit graph theory you can use like okay graph model there are a lot of application using the graph theory i mean you using the graph theory so you can also model a computer networks when we build a graph model we use a type of graph to capture the important features of applications so you illustrate this graph model vertices represent data centers okay so you have data centers or border or border router or what or whatever it can be yeah i mean the most logical thing is a uh, data centers san los angeles denver chicago detroit new york washington when i was an uh, when i was a network engineer with uh, telecom we have three uh, international gateway routers uh, one is in brickfields another one is in Clanet jaya i forgot another one so we have like this a uh, border routers okay a border router before you go to overseas before your packet uh, goes to overseas it will go through this border router mostly at that, that time using uh you know cisco uh, bgp I don't, i'm not sure whether you learn uh, cisco the bgp border gateway pro protocol something like that but just imagine that you can use graph theory to model a network any computer i mean any network that you have okay maybe you have a office uh maybe you work with uh some company that have multiple branches so you can also model a multiple branches if you, if you become a uh, network engineer with that company so to model uh, we are only concerned with the two data centers connected by communication link we use a simple graph so if you are only concerned about okay i just want to know whether san francisco and denver have connection you can use a uh, san francisco and denver have a connection so you use this, a simple uh, undirected graph i want to know only whether they have a link or not so you use a undirected graph so each vertices san francisco denver one h san francisco los, los angeles one h Los Angeles, Denver, 1A, and so on. All this is all 1H. So you can call this is a simple graph. So you you uh, you can see here there is no multi ages. Okay, from San Francisco, Denver, 1 uh, 1H, Denver, Chicago, 1A, and so on. So this is a simple graph. And if you want to model computer network, we care about number of link between data centers. We use a multi graph. Okay. Maybe you have a San Francisco, Denver. It's not really important. I mean, uh, I mean, San Francisco, Denver is important, but it's not really crucial like Denver to Chicago. Maybe this is where the packets, the you know, um, you use a more high-end routers and stuff. More packets going, more packets uh, changes or something like that. So you must have like backup. So this is a normal. You can say this is a fiber. This is a fiber optical. Maybe this is a this is a fiber optic. Fiber optic. Okay. Maybe this is the wireless. Maybe this is set satellite. You must have backup. And if you have, I mean, this is the like uh, second one. Maybe this is a wireless uh, wireless line of sight or something. No, that's too far away. Maybe this is another. 
wireless line outside you cannot like Denver and Chicago is far away uh, I mean a, a couple of hundred km uh, maybe this is a second uh, fiber optics or something like that okay meaning that Denver and Chicago is a very important packet route so very important I mean the data changes data exchange between Denver and Chicago is so much so you have you must have three links or sub some sort of thing some some uh, some sort like that and Chicago Detroit are not very important so Detroit New York Washington so you have here this is the most very because this one let's say Chicago or okay this is again let's say Chicago and Denver down Denver and Chicago link down the San Francisco cannot connect to New York so that's why Denver and Chicago they have three uh, backup I mean they have three links three ways of connection three ages so this is a multigraph to model computer with the diagnostic link at data center we use a pseudo graph as loop needed diagnostic links so if you want to check okay, this is a basic troubleshooting if you are a network engineer try to ping yourself first at the san francisco i mean if you cannot connect san francisco cannot connect to denver try to ping yourself first if it's successful maybe this the uh, culprit the culprit is between san francisco and denver or something like that okay to model with multiple one-way link we use a directed multigraph maybe there is a okay if you want to know uh san francisco have uh, two links to denver only one way but denver to san francisco you model one uh, you have one way it's like download and upload or something like that meaning that denver wants to download from san francisco is much more faster but if they want to upload to San Francisco, it's much more slower. San Francisco want to upload, maybe much more faster. But if San Francisco want to download from Denver, it's much more slower, something like that. So this is the summary of the graph type. So simple graph is, uh, so simple graph, multiple ages, no, no, yes, no. Pseudo graph, so pseudo graph for both undirected and directed they have multiple edges and loops okay in directed graph uh, simple directed graph you have uh, sorry uh, this is a directed graph a multi directed graph okay directed graph uh, loops a lot yes this is a simple directed graph or something like that so we will show how graph theory can be used okay uh, this is the other ap applications not just in network you can say social networks your friends let's say your facebook your instagram or something i mean social networks if you have facebook of course everyone has facebook now i'm not sure the younger generation maybe instagram or something like that social networks you have a mutual friends they use a graph theory you know so so social networks so you have a mutual friends communication networks just like a network information network software design also before you execute you have to run this and that transportation networks like airlines and stuff i mean that if you want from uh if let's say it's an emirates if you have uh bought with emirates airline before everywhere i mean if you want to go to kl to london using emirates you have to transit at dubai something like that and biological networks proteins uh viruses last time so this is all you can use you can illustrate this all this using the graph theory it's a challenge to find subject to which graph theory has not yet been applied i mean uh, one you uh one application that you use is a ways or google maps that's that is definitely a graph theory okay Graph can be used to model social structure based on different conversation between people or groups. So in a social network, vertices represent individual or organization and ages represent relationship between them. So you have a LinkedIn. Uh, if, okay, uh, it's good because I think I uh, assume you all are final year. It's good for you to have LinkedIn whatsoever. Put all your, you know, if, even if you have projects or some working experience, it's better for you to, I mean, if you don't have one, create one LinkedIn. So this is all the uh, individuals, organizations. So LinkedIn also, you can use a graph theory to model that. Useful graph model, social network, or friendship graph, like uh, Facebook or something. Collaboration graph, and where two people, if they collaborate in a specific way. 
this is more like ac academicians like me i maybe collaborate with other departments like uh I maybe collaborate uh collaborate with other departments like department AI, Dr. Chang, Dr. Chang, or uh, Prof uh Information System, Prof Tao, Prof Prof U. And also influence graph. Or maybe I can collaborate uh, like collaboration graph. Um I can I mean I also have uh, uh collaborate with other local researchers, local lecturers in other universities in UK and whatsoever, or maybe in UK or Australia. Influence graph, the graph where there is an age from one person to another. If the first person can influence the second person, something like that. So, French, yes, yeah. Oh, okay. It's supposed to be automatic. Okay, we wait uh, two, three minutes. You have, I think we have uh, 91, uh, 89 students. So far, you have 79. Okay, uh, can we continue? Just interrupt me if there is a student, I mean, if there is a student that cannot uh, enter into this Google Meet. Okay, we continue. Uh, graph model uh, example: a friendship graph where two people connected if they are friends. Okay, something like uh, Eduardo only have Paula, something like that. Okay, uh, and Paula have Jen and so on. So we can. This is this graph is this graph itself is self-explainable and influence graph. So you can have you have a uh, Deborah that can influence Linda, Brian, and Fred, and no one can influence Deborah. Deborah is quite independent, but sadly for Linda, he she can never influence anyone, but she can be easily influenced by Deborah or Brian, something like that. So this is an influence graph, like Brian, uh, Fred, Deborah, and Linda, uh, Fred and Deborah can uh, and Yvonne can influence Brian. Brian can influence, can, I mean, uh, Brian, uh, Deborah, Fred, and Yvonne can influence Brian, but Brian can influence Linda and also uh, something like that. And Brian also can influence Yvonne. Yvonne can influence Brian, Brian can influence Yvonne, maybe they are a couple or something, not sure. So this example of influence graph. The Hollywood graph models the corruption of actors in the films. Okay, uh, the way Steady. I hear a sound. Nikino. So the Hollywood graph, you can model a Hollywood graph whether you want to know, let's say, uh, who's the actor now, who's the, uh, I only know like uh, the old one, the old school one. Let's say you have, okay, if, I don't know whether you know this Al Pacino, they always, last time you, if you into the gangsters movie, they have his Al Pacino and Robert De Niro, where they always compare these two with each other. So the you can build a model graph with the how many films that Al Pacino and Robert De Niro have act together, okay, represent in the same movie. If you watch the Godfather, the God the God uh Godfather number one and two. Sorry, only Godfather two, and others. I think there are only three, but this uh. What else? Uh, maybe uh, who's the comedian? Adam Sandler and maybe Chris Rock or something. How many movies that they have appeared to, together? Okay. 
We connect the vertices with the so I can I can make collaboration graph. So you can see if you see if you read my papers, my research papers, you can see that I have collaborated with others, same department, inter department, other universities, local and also uh, overseas. Uh, I mean uh, overseas uh, universities, uh, international universities and stuff. So mostly we can have this between two researchers in this respect. They are co-authors of a paper. Graph can be used to model different network networks, link different types of information. In web graph, web pages are represented by vertices and links are represented by directors. Age. Web graph models the web at particular time. So because some of the web, I mean some of the world web now is like uh, they don't renew the domain name and stuff already die or already expired. So a graph, a web graph models can only be modeled at a particular time. In citation network, research paper and particular displays are represented by vertices. When a paper size second paper is reference, there is an age from the vertex representing the first paper to the vertex representing the second paper. Uh, you can Google, uh, you can, uh, I'm not, not sure whether you use a Google Scholar before. You can, uh, maybe you can just write my name, you can find, and then you can see my papers, how many people cite my papers, okay? Something like that. So you can, how many many people cite my papers, and I cite what papers. You can also model that using a graph theory. Transportation graph, uh, like like I said before, like if you're using Emirates, uh, anywhere you want to go, like from KL to London, if you're using Emirates, you have to transit at Dubai or something like that. Okay, even the road. I mean, uh, airports. Uh, there is uh, airport to the destination airport. So road networks can model also using a graph. What is represent intersection edges represent roads. Undirected edges represent two way roads and represent one way roads. Okay, undirected. You can just imagine about two way roads, left and right. Directed edges, one way roads. Okay. And software design applications. You have a model we introduce such models. One being the dependency between the models of a software applications. Another being the restriction as you statements in computer programs. We use a model dependency graph to represent a dependency between these models. This basic need to be understood before coding can be done. Uh, so in a model dependency graph vertices like the, the software models and there is an A from one model to another if the second model depends on the first one. So let's say it is um, we have software in the main maybe if you use Java or C or C++ we have a main. Main influence everything protocol plus okay protocol you have to depend on the network pro network protocol and then you have a main uh, main also can uh, everyone depends on the main okay ev 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 everything like display parser protocol abstract syntax will depend on the main file okay it, it, actually in c or c plus plus dot h okay dot header file something like that okay software design applications Vertices represent statements in a computer program. There is a direct error from vertex to second vertex if the second vertex cannot be executed before the first. You can see that this precedence graph shows which statement must already have been executed before we can execute each of the six statements. Also, if you can see S1 and S2 doesn't depend on other uh, statements. Okay, statement 1 and statement 2 doesn't depend on other statements. They can just execute. Statement 1 and statement 2. But if you go to statement 3, statement 3, if you want to execute statement 3, you have to execute statement 1 first. Okay. A plus and statement 2. Sort of. Statement 3. A plus 1. Statement 4, you have to, you have uh, B plus A. Is If you are in statement 4, you have to execute statement 1 and statement 2 first, okay? You cannot just simply execute statement 4 without execute statement 1 and statement 2. 
So this is one uh, application example of application that can you, that you can use a graph theory to model it. Biological applications. Vertices represent species and age connects to vertices when they represent species who compete for food resources. Okay. Uh, let's say like raccoon will uh, okay. Uh, Raccoon have raccoon is basically a skull scavenger. They have to complete with owl, hawk, and squirrel. Okay. Mouse only. Uh, mouse only. Uh, compete with shoe with I mean the food 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 resources. Okay. The biological application. Uh, all this remember like a virus uh, COVID-19 they have number of I am not sure number of train or something you can model that as well using a graph theory number of types of uh, number of there are a couple of types of the COVID-19 virus or model or something like that uh, like uh, from uh, from not really dangerous to very dangerous just like in HFMD, uh, I'm sure HFMD hand, foot, mouth, and disease is uh, you know common for children between the age of uh, three to twelve or something like that. If I'm not mistaken, uh, this is a common. They have HFMD, but only one certain virus that is very dangerous. Uh, they can kill a child within uh, seventy. Uh, sorry. 72 hours if not detected early it can kill a child hfmd but others hfmd virus is if you like uh, if you practice a uh, good hygiene and just take uh, you know a normal paracetamol and stuff it can be cured but there's one virus in hfmd is very dangerous where they can kill children within three days, 72 hours, something like that. Okay. So graph terminology, a special type of graph. So it's a basic terminology. Um, it's not 2 p.m. yet, so we just continue. So definition, two vertices U, V in N, in an undirected graph, G are called adjacent or neighbors. In G, if there is an H, E between U and V, such an H is called incident with the vertices U and V, and E is said to connect U and V. So, uh, in mathematics, wording, I mean, there's some definition, theorem, if you read the theorem, uh, definition make you more confused but basically what they try to, uh, what try they are trying to say is u and v you have ages here so u is the neighbors of v and vice versa so you have h1 h1 h here so this h is called incident with the vertices u and v and is said to connect u and v something like this basically this is the you know uh, you have to put how many words there more almost I mean more than 20 words just to represent UV with the H Definition 2 the set of all neighbors of vertex V of G Vertex V of G graph where set of vertices V and E Denoted by neighbors V is called neighborhood of V Okay, if A is a subset of V we do not uh, we denote uh, not by neighbors set neighbors A the set of all vertices in G that are adjacent to at least one vertex in A. So basically, you have a V here. Okay, it's called neighbor V. Uh, then you have the W X Y Z. So all this, let's say, if they have a connection, they are all they are all neighborhood of. So you can say N V is uh w x y and z and say is it called if a is a subset of v a is a subset of v w x y and z can be any subset any let's say uh w is element of v as well okay 
uh, if a subset of v we denote na neighborhood of w is v okay or maybe w is connected to x number v n v n uh, x v n x sorry for my handwriting v n x so neighborhood of w v n x let's say n w is an n a in g adjacent to at least one vertex in a so v at least one vertex in adjacent to at least one vertex in a so you can have a w at least w is uh, connect neighbors of v and vice versa definition three the degree of a vertex in a delta graph is the number of ages incident with it i said that i look at vertex go two to the degree of the vertex the degree of the vertex v is noted by degree v okay uh, this is a degree how many age uh, or connection from a to b you can see that okay Termin undirected graph, U and V are adjacent if U and V is an H, E is coincident. We have to cover that. Degree of vertex, number of edges incident of vertex. A loop contribute twice to the degree. Why? Because a loop is, uh, let's say A, we have a loop. Uh, twice to the degree. Outgoing, outgoing and ingoing. Outgoing and ingoing. It's the same. That's why the degree of A is uh, degree of uh, degree of A is 2 because you have outgoing and you have an ingoing as well something like that that's why a loop contributes twice to the degree pendant vertex degree V is 1 isolated vertex degree K is 0 ok let's see one this example for V where you have a set of vertex U, V and W and ages U, W, U, V U, W and U, V Degree U is 2. Why? U and W and U and V. So degree uh, degree U is 2. Degree V is 1. Degree W is equal to 1. Degree K is equal to 0. So pendant vertex, which one? You can say V and W is a pendant vertex because the degree is only 1. Isolated vertex degree k k is like island it's like an, an island so it's it has no connection whatsoever so the degree of k is zero this is what the degree in undirected graph means the way you write uh, the way you write the degree uh, the way you want to calculate the degree in undirected graph example what are the degrees and neighborhood of the vertices in the graph g and h so we have degree A2, correct? A, B, A, F. Degree B is equal to degree C, degree F4. 1, 2, 3, 4. F1, 2, 3, 4. C1, 2, 3, and 4. E, uh, degree E is 3. 1, 2, and 3. Degree G is 0. So degree G is 0. Degree D is 1. So this is a pendant and this is a isolated okay and a okay neighborhood of a is b and f neighborhood of b is a c and f a sorry neighborhood of b is a c f and e and so on this uh, neighborhood of g is zero null neighborhood of d is only c neighborhood of d is only c because this is a pendant pendant okay let's see h Okay, this is a is this a simple graph for 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 G? Is this a simple graph? Anyone? You're still there. Is it a simple graph or not? Can you hear me? Not yes. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry, uh, I'll not in there. So you can see only one B E B F is so uh so this is a simple graph actually. H is not a simple graph because they have a multi ages. Okay. Degree A four one, two, three, and four. Degree B and degree E, degree B and degree E. B, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. 
six one one two three four okay five six so degree b is six and so on so neighborhood of a is b d and e so on so this is a okay this is a this is a pseudo graph okay degree uh do you guys need a break should we continue or? yes okay all right uh we leave for a break but uh 10 minutes or so and then we continue at 2 10. uh okay we're gonna continue our lecture okay uh we go to the degree of vertices this is theorem one handshaking theorem okay if a graph where the set of vertices and set of edges is an undirected graph with m edges then two uh 2 m m is the ages is equal to summation of vertex v element of all v degree v degree of all vertex summation of basically 2 m 2 times ages is equal to summation of degree each age contribute twice to the degree count of all vertices hence both the left hand and right hand side of this equation equal twice the number of ages each edge contributes twice the degree of count vertices. Okay. Uh, hence, both left hand and right hand side of this equation equal twice the number of edges. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Do two m is equal to some uh, total summation of degree. Let's say. Okay. We take uh, graph G here. Graph G. So we have degree A. Two plus. Uh, Sorry, uh, okay, we have a uh, degree A, uh, 2 plus 444 4, 4 plus 12 plus 1 plus 3 plus 1 plus 3. So we have here 2, uh, 2 plus 12, 4, 4, 14 plus 4, 16. Okay, 16. So if you apply the 2m is equal to summation of degree V. Okay, 2e is equal degree v is 16, e is ages is 8. So, is it correct? Number of ages is 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Wait. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Wait, wait. Where did I miss? Degree A, 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 10, 3, 12, plus 1, plus 3, plus 0. 2M is degree V. Okay. Is it 9? 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 2 plus 12, 14. 14, 15 plus 3, 18. Sorry. No one corrected me. <laughs> 2 plus 12, 14. 14, 15, 18. So it's uh, 18, 9. Are you correcting me? Or? Not sure whether you guys still with me or not. But yeah, it's a simple math. So 9. So you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 ages. We just want to test the theory of Theorem one, handshaking theorem. If a uh, graph, set a graph uh, V and E is an undirected graph with m ages, then two m is equal to summation, uh, total summation of degree V, all vertices. Okay, we now give to another the is illustrating the usefulness of the handshaking theorem. How many edges are there in graph with 10 vertices of degree 6? 
10 vertices of degree 6. So we have 10 vertices, each degree 6 is 10 times 60. 10 times 6 is 60. The handshaking theorem tells that 2m is equal to 60. So number of ages m is 30. Uh, let's see if we try to do this uh, example, okay? You, you, you know, if we just try to do example, okay? Uh, you have here, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, okay? 10 vertices. Let's say you want to have, uh, okay, uh, these vertices. Let's say each have, uh, each have, uh, six. You have one, two, three, four, five, or maybe you can have another one, six here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, degree six. Uh, sorry. Then this one, so you have a degree six. One, two, three, four, five. And maybe you just see uh, six. And the rest is you, you use the same six. And this one also, you already have one, two, three, four, five, and six. So the number of ages. Well, it becomes so messy here. Uh, this one, this one. Okay, never mind. <laughs> because it becomes too. So you have a number of ages is 30. So it's definitely is it's a true because it's following the theorem. Never mind. If graph have five vertices, can each vertex have degree three? If a graph have five vertices. Can each vertex have degree 3? So if you have 3, 5 times 3 is equal to 15. This is not possible by the handshake because the sum of degrees of the vertex 3 to 15 is odd. So another way is because it's 2m. Anything, if the ages are even odd when you times with 2, it will become even number. So this, the right hand side, so the uh, left hand side, sorry, left hand side. The left hand side is even and the right hand side also is even. Even and even. So you have 5 times 3, 15. 15 is odd. So it's not possible to have 5 vertices that have a degree of 3. So this is where we come to theorem 2. An undirected graph has an even number of vertices of odd degree. An undirected graph, see the, the undirected graph here, the keyword, has an even number of vertices of odd degree. Okay, let V1 be the vertices of even degree and V2 be the vertices of odd degree and directed graph G. So with M ages. So you have even to M, so it must be even. This one also, uh, if V2 is the odd degree, also must be even. Okay, let's test this theorem in a previous example. Let me erase this one first. Okay, uh, separate the odd and even degree. So the, the degree odd summation of odd degree V. So you have here 1 and 3. 1 plus 3 is equal 4. Even degree. Hmm. 
V1, this one is V1, this one is V2, is even 12 plus 2, 14. So you can see here 2M is equal to uh, odd degree V1 plus even degree V2. So you can see degree of V1 here is odd. These terms must be also even. Say we can see from this one, 1 plus 3 is 4, even number. So degree V2 even, of course, the summation of even is even. Okay, so you can see that this one even. This also must be even. And this, of course, this even. So all these terms are even. Even, even, and even. So you have degree V is even for V V1, V1 set of even degree. Of course, you try to summarize, you have to do a summation of all even degree. Of course, the answer will be even. The first term in the right hand side of the last inequality is even. So the first term is uh, on the right hand side, even. The sum of the last two terms on the right hand side of the last inequality even since sum is 2e. So degree V is also even even though v2 is odd degrees okay both of these terms is even actually 2e this is even this is even this is even and this is also even directed graph so so far we talk about undirected graph for the theorem and checking theorem and then we have a directed graph Okay, recall the definition of a directed graph. And directed graph, G, where graph with a set of vertices V and E consists of V, a non-empty set of vertices or nodes, and E, a set of directed edges or arcs. Okay, V, non-empty set of vertices. Each H is an ordered pair of vertices. Each H is an unordered pair of vertices, meaning that U and V ordered pair okay u and v the director h uv is said to start at u and n and v definitely let uv be an h in g then u is the initial vertex of this and adjacent to v and v is the terminal m ten adjacent from u this and terminal vertex of look are the same so this is the director graph sorry uh, okay this is how you calculate the in okay degree of un uh, sorry you calculate the degree of directed graph. Okay, in directed graph, you have uh, in degree, when number of edges for which U is terminal vertex, and out degree, the number which U is initial vertex. Terminal vertex mean, meaning that end point terminates at U. The out degree is initial vertex, meaning that the in degree is coming at U. Okay, this is U and this is V. So in degree u, number of edges with u terminal vertex. So let's say this is w terminate at u. So you have u degree in degree u is two degree minus eh? minus u is two. The out degree number of edge u which u is an initial vertex. So how degree yeah, plus we call it uh, out degree plus u where u is initial vertex is one sort of. Okay, let's see on this example. A loop contributes one to both in degree and out degree. Of course, one uh, I mean both in degree in degree 1 and out degree 2 because it's both ingoing and outgoing. Representation example for V, U, V, and W where uh, E is a set of uh, undirected H of U, W, V, W, and U, V. So in degree U is, the in degree U is a terminal vertex. Which one terminate at U? No, terminate at U. So U is 0 degree uh sorry out degree u where u is the initial vertex is 2 v and w 
degree v is w1 because uh, in degree of v is the in degree is 1 because u terminate at v degree outgoing v is 1 because v terminate terminates at w v going to w uh, e v is the initial vertex and w is the termination point this one the in degree v is v is the term uh, v is the end point or terminate uh, termination point u is the initial vertex and degree w is 2 the in degree w where w is a terminal vertex termination at w is 2 u and v but zero outgoing no one's no no packets leave w something like that okay so this is a direct graph in degree and out degree I mean direct graph you have the in degree and out degree so direct graph so number of which terminate v so you just look at the example degree a so degree a remember in the de uh, degree a in degree okay in degree if you see the minus terminate at u minus terminate u minus terminate so you have degree a terminate at a how many one loop itself two so degree in degree a is two degree b is how many terminate at b one and two so b and so on so you can see it here is a so, uh, let's see degree in degree c how many terminate at c one two and three okay you have three here degree in degree d terminate at d you have one and two so you have one and two and so on outgoing a outgoing a loop one two three and four okay Okay, directed graph, they also have theorem, directed graph, let V graph, then the number, the, okay, this absolute number, the summation of degree V, the ingoing, is equal to the outgoing. Summation of ingoing is equal to the outgoing. The first sum counts the number of going ages over all vertices, second sum counts the number of incoming ages over all vertices. So, just remember... Total summation of in degree is equal to total summation of outgoing. So let's see the okay. Let's see this uh, example. Okay, let's see this example. Which what number slide of this? Uh? Uh, I forgot to put the slide number. Never mind. Okay. Uh, let's see this example. So total summation of Total summation of uh, in degree or minus two plus two plus three seven seven two nine nine three twelve twelve. So the outgoing also must be twelve four one. Four one five five two seven seven two nine nine three twelve is equal to twelve. So the in the sum total summation of in degree and, and sorry in going and outgoing in going meaning that terminate at that vertex outgoing meaning that starting at that vertex initial point. So twelve and twelve. So it covers the theorem three. I mean it uh, follows the rules of theorem three. And we have a special type of simple graph, a complete graph. A complete graph of n vertices denoted by Kn is the simple graph that contains exactly one edge between each pair of distinct vertices. A complete graph.
a complete graph so you have k1 k2 k3 k4 complete graph meaning that all vertices are connected to each other k1 k2 k3 k4 these vertices complete to all other vertices and so on k5 k6 complete graph of vertices denoted by kn is the simple graph that contains exactly one edge between each pair of distinct vertices so the complete graph is each vertices each vertices is connected to each other okay vertices a connect b c and d so a connect to c d a b c connect to a b and d uh a sorry and this one b d sorry d connect to c b and a and so on this one also a b c d e so a connect to c b all others vertex all others vertices are connected to each other in k6 k7 whatever, whatever okay a cycle a cycle itself a complete a cycle a complete cycle okay cm for n more than three consists of n vertices v1 v2 and ages v1 v2 v3 so you have c a cycle c3 c4 c5 c6 is a cycle just imagine is just imagine it will create one loop one loop one complete loop a wheel okay adding additional vertex to c okay the wheel meaning that just imagine it's a wheel your wheel your 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 car tire or your motorcycle tire you put here in the middle then you connect so this become a wheel so that c3 can become w3 c4 can become w4 if you put a vertex in the middle and connect to each other vertex and so on the n dimensional hypercube or n cube is a graph with 2 to the power of n vertices representing all bit string of length n where there is an edge between two vertices that differ in exactly one bit position so this one is like 0 and 1 this one is 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 and this one is 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 1 0 and so on so we have a 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 1 0 you connect each other here and then you connect all this you put uh these four together the starting with zero and all this is starting with one you can also like four uh you have uh, if more than q n you have okay let's say uh where should i Okay, you have okay, you have a, you have a, let's say you want to create a four, four bits, uh, two to the power of uh, four is sixteen. Okay, so you have here zero, 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 zero one, uh, zero, zero, one, zero, and this one is zero, zero, one, one. Okay, connect all this four. Okay, and then you have a zero one. Uh, you have a zero one uh, zero one zero zero, and you have a zero one zero one. Then you have a, you have a, wait, uh, you have a zero one one zero and zero one one one. So you connect here, you connect here, you connect here and here. You connect here. I'm sorry for the okay. And then you make another one here. This one is start starting with zero. You have eight point here. So another eight point which one one zero 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 one zero zero one uh one zero one zero and one one zero one one. And then you have here uh, we don't have much spaces but you have the idea okay you just complete another four this one so you just connect this one zero zero this one connect to here this one connect to here this one connect to here so you can create a, this a qn a q4 here before this is q3 q2 and q1 
So Q4, you cannot hear, of course, you have to write down. So this is the way QN. It can be more and more. I mean, it's use, better to use a software like Mathematica or something. So special type of graph and computer network architecture. If you learn about the uh, networks, you have, you know, you, this is a star uh, ring topology, uh, mesh topology or something like that. Okay. And you have an N dimensional hypercube or N cube, a common way to connect processor parallel Intel hypercube. Uh, yeah, in, in the parallel programming. Another common method is the mesh network. You say here in 16 processors mesh network. Okay. Okay, bipartite graph. A simple graph G is bipartite if V can be partitioned to two disjoint subsets V1 and V2 such that every edge connects the vertex in V1 and the vertex in V2. In other words, there are no edges that connect between vertex V1 or V2. Okay. It's not hard to show the equivalent definition of a bipartite graph. It's a graph where it's possible to color the vertices red or blue so that no edges in graph. Okay, let's say you have here this one. This is A, B, C, A, B. This is all. Okay, A, B, you can uh, bar pipe you can. Okay, this is A, A, B, and D. And this one are all those G, F, E, and C. Is C, C, E, F, G. C, C, E, F, G. Bar pipe meaning that you don't have, uh, you can separate into two groups, okay? With the, uh, but uh, two groups, the vertices in group one are all connected to vertices in group two, and no, I mean no, no same group have edges between them. So like say A cannot have edge with B, B cannot have edge with D, or A cannot have edge with D, and so on. So you have your A connected to G, F, E, and C. B is connected to C. C, E, and F. C, E, and F. C, E, and F. And D is connected to C, G, F, and E. C, G, F, and E. D, C, G, F, and E. So you have, the, there are no two, uh, the same group that have an edges. So this is bipartite. Uh, I think you get the idea. Sorry for the very terrible handwriting of mine. Um, we try to make it. Uh... So you have here a a. B and D, A, B and D, one group, and C, E, F, G, C, E, F, G, okay, this is one group, so A connected to G, uh, G, F, E, and C, A, C, E, F, and G. And B is connected to F, E, and C. F, E, and C. And D is connected to C, G, F, E. D, C, E, F, G. So, you can separate to two groups. And let's say group 1 and this is group 2 of set vertices. So there is no edges between group one. And there's no edges between group two, but uh, edges uh, edge only have between different groups. This one edge is not bipartite since we color red. Then the adjacent vertices F and B must both be blue. So you cannot separate this into two groups. So this is not bipartite. Example is show C six is bipartite. So we can potentially set into V1, V1, and V3, and V5, and V2, V2, V4, V2, so that every edge of C6 connected vertex in V1 and V2. So you have C6 here, you have V1, V2, V3. Okay, V1, uh, V1, 
this one v2 and this one is v3 okay uh, we have v2 v3 this one is uh, sorry 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 v1 v3 So v1 this one is v2 v3 v4 v5 and v6 so we have here v1 v3 and v5 not connected to each other so v1 is connected to v2 yes v1 also connected to v6 yes and then uh, v3 is connected to v2 yes v3 connected to v4 yes and so on so this v c6 cycle 6 we can say it is a vertex show that c3 is not a bipartite so if we try to uh, we try to we'll call that we try to separate into two groups you cannot have uh, this set of bipartite there there is still ages between the same group so there is still an age between the same group so you cannot separate you can uh, c5 is uh, c3 is not bipartite since you cannot separate into two groups without h between same group so this is a complete bipartite graph k m n so we have k 2 and 3 2 vertices and 3 2 vertices in group 1 and 3 vertices in group 2 you connect each other uh, complete by this is what we call a complete bipartite graph so this one k 3 3 so this is a group 1 and this is group number two so no ages between the same group no age between the same group and so on so bipartite graph and matchings bipartite graph are used to model application that involve matching the elements of one set to elements in another for example job assignment which is represented jobs and the employees ages like link employees with those jobs have been trained to do so alvarez can do requirements and Alvarez can also do a testing but he cannot do architecture implementation Barkowitz can do architecture implementation and also a testing okay but he cannot do the requirement so how do you you can like op, op, you can like optimize this one all right you can like optimize this one like Davis can only uh, do requirements. Davis cannot do something else. So you instead of Davis already re do the requirements, so you don't you don't need Al Alvarez to do the requirements. Alvarez can be optimized to do the testing. Okay, uh, Berkowitz can do both. Uh, can do testing, implementation, and ar architecture. Since Alvarez already do the testing. So Berkowitz is better to do the implementation because uh, and then architecture because Chen is doing the architecture Berkowitz doesn't have to do the architecture so you can remove all this the black line so that you can become optimized all right so that only one job assigned to each one so it's they are more focused uh, they are more reliable and stuff. Here you have a new graph from O, a subgraph of graph G, V is a graph W, F, where W is an, an, is an element of V, and F is an element of E. A subgraph H of G is a proper subgraph of G, if H is not equal to G. So you can see here we show K5 and one of the subgraphs. So this is the K5, and this is one of the subgraph. Subgraph is like, you can like put this one, uh, put this, uh, put uh, graph number two into graph number one. So let G V uh, definition again. Let G the graph uh, set of vertices V and ages E be a simple graph. The subgraph induced by subset W of the vertex V is the graph W F, where the H set F contains an H in A, and if and only if both endpoints are in W. Okay, example here we show K five and the subgraph induced by W A B C and E. So W uh, K five. This is K five. And this is the W, A, B, C, and E. A, B is correct. A, C, B, C, and A. This is new graph from the old graph. 
and also you can union unionize graph the union of two simple graph v1 e1 g2 v2 e uh, graph g1 where set of vertex v1 e1 and graph 2 where set of vertex v2 e2 and ages e2 the simple graph with vertex set v1 union with v2 and age set e1 uh, ages 1 union with ages 2 the union of g1 g2 is, is denoted by g1 union g2 so you have your you have your g g1 and you have your g2 if you unionize this you have a and d here and then you have uh, a b and e here a c and e c and e and so on so this is a unionized g1 union unionized with g2 okay uh, we are finished for today